Know the attack types. Shmups have three common attack types, aimed, static, and randomized. First we have aimed attacks. Their trajectory is based on the player's position. Sometimes the direction is slightly randomized to keep things unpredictable. In most arcade games, the directions are limited by sprites and rotation frames. For example, if enemies have 8 frames of rotation, they'll only be able to shoot in 8 directions. This can make aimed attacks feel more unpredictable, creating the feeling that enemies lead their shots. Aimed attacks can be simple or complex. The key is that their direction is determined by the player's location, which means they can be manipulated with movement. Static attacks always use the same starting direction, regardless of what the player does, though dynamic enemy movement can distort these patterns. If an enemy moves around with the player, static attacks can serve the same purpose as aimed attacks. While both static and aimed attack trajectories can be slightly randomized, they can still be predicted and or manipulated. Randomized attacks cannot. They can have weights and limits, but they still force reactive dodging and improvisation. Know the dodging types. Broadly, there are two types of dodging, micro and macro. Micro dodging refers to squeezing through small gaps inside of patterns. Players will tend to treat micro dodging as a last resort because it's risky. Despite this, it can give confident players more control over their spacing, since they will see more viable openings. Macro dodging means dodging the entire pattern itself. Macro dodging aimed patterns requires active shot misdirection and a lot of movement, while macro dodging static patterns usually boils down to finding a safe spot. It's very safe in isolation, but being led around the screen so much can force players into awkward positions, ones which make dealing with upcoming threats more difficult. Apply general design principles. Think of how attacks are designed in other action games. A good attack is not only challenging, well telegraphed and flashy, but gives the player a range of responses, each with their own pros and cons. For example, let's say the boss attacked. Perhaps dodging away is the safest and easiest option, but leaves you unable to counterattack. While misdirecting, parrying, or otherwise avoiding the attack directly could be difficult to figure out or execute, but leave the player in the best place to counterattack or otherwise deal damage. Furthermore, good attack sequences flow into one another and are fun to dodge and punish. While action game attacks tend to be discrete, shmup attacks are broken up into a lot of different parts which heavily overlap with each other. They may look different, but the same design principles apply to them both. Think in lanes. When designing dense patterns, think of them as a collection of lanes. Different lanes are micro-challenges with their own rewards. Some lanes might have bigger gaps or more wiggle room, but leave you in a worse position to deal with upcoming threats. Some lanes might be safe, but prevent you from attacking enemies directly. Some lanes might be dangerous, but let you stay aggressive. Once you start combining enemy and pattern types, this really makes a difference. If the player is getting blasted with aimed patterns while stuck in a lane, some extra wiggle room can be vital for survival. Players like having some choices, risk versus reward dynamics, and something to improve on. Think about roles and combine patterns. Patterns are typically made up of several parts, which synergize. Each part you add has a role, whether you want it to or not. Here's some common roles. Pressure. Patterns which harass the player and prevent them from staying in the same place for long. Clutter. Patterns that create obstacles which make movement more difficult. Area denial. denial. Patterns which block off parts of the screen, usually as a way to set up other patterns or as a way to block previously safe lanes. Final. Patterns which lead the player somewhere sometimes to help guide them, sometimes to trap them. Direct challenge. When patterns become sufficiently wide, dense, fast, or hard to read, they start becoming standalone tests and don't need to rely on synergy with other patterns. There are more roles you can identify if you look. Think about what the components of your patterns are meant to do and how they play off each other. Slowly escalate difficulty. This is very common during boss fights. Start with easier versions of patterns, then make them faster, denser, and more difficult with each repetition. This telegraphs the attack and lets players get into its flow before fully blasting them. Be mindful of the player. Try to figure out where the player will move over the course of a pattern and what they will be looking at. A good example is curved patterns. Even if they have gaps, players will be more inclined to follow the curve. Take stuff like this into account and you can lead the player from one pattern into the next seamlessly. It's this sense of flow that makes bullet hell shmups so fun to play. Straightforward patterns work well enough, but they can get quite boring. You can do many things to spice them up. Here are some techniques you can see other shmups using. Some patterns look bendy because each subsequent bullet that's fired travels faster than the previous one. You may notice that some spread attacks spawn all their bullets at the same time, but give them different speeds. As a result of these speed differences, some bullets will lag behind and create gaps as they travel along. 
Some patterns use the player's location to determine their starting direction. Once the starting direction is set, the emitter rotates with each shot. This creates curves and zigzags, which players will be inclined to follow. Using two emitters which rotate in opposite directions, and firing bullets which curve in opposite directions lets you create some fun, overlapping patterns, ones which force players to time their dodges. A fun trick Cave like to use is having bosses shoot projectiles, which in turn spawn their own projectiles. For example, the cat spider throws a ball which creates at least four emitters that all curve opposite ways and create their own projectiles. A similar type of pattern can be seen during Ketsu's true last boss. It shoots projectiles that leave behind slowly accelerating bullets. Mushihime Samafutari's second boss gives a very interesting example of how emitter movement itself can be used to distort patterns. The movement of the upper bullets may seem crazy, but it's simply an emitter that shoots three aimed bullets at the player while being moved around left to right. Cesare spawns six emitters, each shooting six bullets. The bullets shoot around the center of the arena, forcing the player into a small box. Once the player is trapped, the boss assaults them with other patterns while moving the box. These sorts of patterns are quite popular, Toho games love them. Though, even straightforward patterns can be spiced up with the use of slow escalation and lanes. Beep this pattern, it starts with a simple but fast spread that encourages tab dodging. Each repetition makes the gap smaller and increases the amount of bullets spawned, making dodges tighter. It follows this up with wall patterns that invite you to micro dodge, despite having micro dodging friendly gaps. As the phase goes on, the pattern gets wider, requiring more active macro dodging. Because it gets wider, eventually macro dodging might become too risky, and you will instead decide to go for micro dodges. The pattern isn't that complicated or difficult, but it has a very nice mix of dodging types and room for decision making thanks to lanes. There's a lot more stuff that goes into pattern design that I couldn't quite uh, capture in this video, but hopefully I gave you enough tools that you can like boot up a game, find the pattern you like, and start analyzing it. Like find where the emitters are, find how they move around, figure out which patterns are like aimed, which are static, which are random. Uh, think about how it makes you move around, think about lanes, and think about how the attacks flow into each other. This way, not only will you learn a lot, but you'll have a lot of fun as well.